Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Clinton Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's the C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. Hello, Thrivers, and welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio. My name is Clay Clark, the former SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, sent here to help you make your wallet expand. And I'm joined here with the man, the myth, the guy who's been putting Z's all over Tulsa like his name was Zorro. It is Dr. Robert Zellner. Sir, how are you? I would just like to say, I am fantastic. Thank you, Clay. But I would just like to say, happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. Just the big the big heart. We oh. love we love. Every Every one of our thrivers, we we thank you for listening, and we hope that you have a a wonderful day, um, a Valentine's Day. So, and this just in too, you know, Prince is now available on Spotify, and I'm not sure what songs are, are wholesome, nice love songs for the context of marriage, but I would say uh, "I Would Die for You" would be a great song you could dedicate <laughs> to a loved one here on this very special <laughs> Valentine's Day. Yes, yes, that would that would be uh, that's a very passionate, very passionate song, and. Uh, that, that could that, be a that, move. That, that, that could be a move, yeah. I'm going to kind of just pick it up here. There we go, Thrivers. This song, this goes out to all the Thrivers out there. We, we love you. We appreciate you. And we sincerely hope that you uh, that you love and appreciate the, the Prince Greatest Hits on now on Spotify the way that we do. Absolutely. But the problem with that move is you can only do it once for somebody. I mean, mm. you know, and then it's... Oh, it's kind of over. I use that move, yeah. <laughs> now, we have a, a, a ray of hope inside the box that rocks. I mean, oh, we, I like we, we, have, we have the place is well lit. We have a lot of lighting. And it's kind of, we have Edison bulbs inside the box that rocks we're burning uh, pinion wood in the box that rocks but the the ambiance just got better we have pastor ray owens of the metropolitan baptist church inside the box that rocks tulsa's pastor sir how are you doing hey great today happy valentine's day to all our listeners much love to each of you you know it, you, let me ask you this at, at church for the for the valentine's uh you know sermon the valentine's uh, uh you know the the, the you're going to be doing obviously a, a sermon this week do you do you try to get in your valentine's sermon before valentine's day or after valentine's day what's kind of your, your your move i've done it both ways but i always ask the question where is the love oh. show me the love now, are you are you and are you the kind of guy that gets your wife there, Pastor, with the the mixed uh, chocolate where you not really you know, it's kind of a gamble. It's yeah. almost like a risk where if you give her the box and she opens it up, there's a chance she might not like the chocolates. Or are you? Do you have kind of a move? No, I don't like take, taking chances. My wife loves chocolate covered strawberries always a home run so if somebody's listening right now yeah. and they're and they go to your church or not and they're going look i'm looking for the pastor to give me <laughs> uh, marital advice i forgot to get something i've got just a few hours to get my wife something i'm gonna ask z i'm gonna, z, I'm gonna ask you the same question so don't make fun of pastor ray if he's got a, if he has an answer that's not too hot here okay so what is the move i have four or five hours until i get home from work what what should i be getting my wife well flowers and candy is always the, i mean those are the two standards um and then also too if you you know, it, it depends on on what she likes. If she doesn't like candy, I probably wouldn't get her candy. And just like Pastor Ray said, if you know what kind she particularly likes, then get that for goodness sakes. I mean, like if he comes home anything other than chocolate covered strawberries, she's going to be like, oh yeah. Well, I yeah. tell you what, on behalf of the, the newly married thrivers out there, I've screwed that up before. I got my wife a bunch <laughs> of uh, items Shocking. that have utilitarian purposes. You know, like a blender uh, for Valentine's oh, that's, or that's pots very and pans romantic. or yeah, it was t too utilitarian. So Pastor Owens, what 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 would be the ultimate gift you'd recommend if someone's in a bind? Valentine's Day is not the day to be utilitarian. Let's start there. But <laughs> the ultimate gift is something sweet, something personal. You need to know what your wife wants. And it's all right to ask. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. all right. Oh, now, we don't have to read brains. Yeah. No. 
Now, here's the deal, Thrivers. You've been huh. you've been asking some questions this week. You've been asking a lot of questions. And what we're going to start doing on the show more and more often is we're going to be answering the real questions from real business owners like you. And we're going to teach you the proven strategies, systems, and processes of millionaires, billionaires, and everyday success stories. And so I'm going into our mailbag here, Z. And the first mailbag question we have today, and this is from a Thriver in Connecticut. And this is the question they ask. Wait a second. Hold on one second. Don't I have like a mailbag like... Are you looking like for a button? Ma- don't I have one that like tee up mailbag <laughs> Tuesday? Uh, Valentine's, you know, don't I have one? Well, Sam, don't, where's my button? I feel like you do have one there. There's a mailbag <laughs> question that's available at any time. Here we go, Z. I'm ready for it. It's on at soundboard A. Here we go, Z. Here we go. Mailbag. Hey, mailbag. Yeah, there we go. We got a, I knew we had a mailbag button. I, I feel though that this, so official now. this is the sound I prefer though. In the news. <laughs> this just in. I like this sound better with the mailbag. We'll have to talk to the Thrivers, but here we go. A Thriver in Connecticut asks this question. How do we solve cash flow issues? How do I do it, Z? Cash flow issues, how do we solve them? Well, what you need to do, um, one of the best ways to solve cash flow problems, obviously, is, is make sure your budget and make sure that you, you know, you're using your money wisely. Um, you know, apart from that, let's say you are and you have some AR, you know, you have some billing and you don't get, you know, you got to pay out before you get paid in. And so you have a... You said a, AR for anyone who's new to oh, this? accounts receivable. I'm okay. sorry. I can't, right. You have accounts receivable. In other words, you're billing somebody and they have a, a, a length of time to pay you, but you've got to pay out on that process before that. So you have a lag in collecting your money. One of the best moves to do is is wherever you're listening from, uh, i.e. if you're from Northeast Oklahoma, Tulsa region, you can go right over to Regent Bank. They have locations in Nowada, Tulsa, and Oklahoma City. And what you can do is you can go in and get what we call in the business a line of credit. Mm. Now, what is a line of credit? Claire? What is a line of credit, Z? What is, what is a line of credit? A line of credit is when you go in and you take your, say, your accounts receivable, okay? And you know, hey, I have this much money coming on these particular days in the future, all right? Okay. And you can verify that and show that. Then what the bank will do on the strength of that, they will give you a line of credit. In other words, it's a loan, but you don't pay back the loan until you draw off of it. In other words, you have a you have a stash of cash waiting for you that you can dip into when you need to to help you with your cash flow situation so let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars in accounts receivable clay okay all right and you take that into the bank and you take in your financials and you you go in with the bank that is business friendly and they're looking for this kind of business i.e region bank is here in tulsa oklahoma and then they say okay well we'll give you 70 percent or 80 percent of a line of credit on your ar your accounts receivable so you may have 70 or eighty thousand now in an account that you can draw off of you can get to when you need it mm. and if you don't draw off of it if you don't then you don't pay any you don't pay any interest on it so you it's a it's kind of like a little bank of cash that you have access to does that make sense now i would say this i would say the regent bank move is a move that you and i 100 percent endorse the credit line move yes and i think it's also kind of a midterm move because it's it requires some proactivity true that so you got to sit down with the bank set up an appointment go go, go over to oklahoma joe's get yourself some baked beans <laughs> bring those over to regent and say hey guys you want to talk about uh, a credit line? You know, kind of sweeten them up a little bit. You Absolutely. Know. Broadcasting live from the center of the universe. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show. But it requires some proactivity. And no, for those no of doubt, you who no are doubt. in kind of a reactive, like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I'm going to get into that. I'm going to help you with that. But that is definitely the move. If you're listening right now and you can be proactive and you say, what, what can I do to feel str- less stressed in 2017? That is the move. And so again, when we, we can only answer the questions that we get, so we don't know the whole context. So I would just say that's the way to improve your cash flow. And then I want to ask Pastor Ray, I want to ask your feedback on this because you manage a church sure. and uh, this could be very applicable if anybody owns a, a nonprofit, runs a nonprofit, or any kind of organization, what would be the moves that you would recommend for somebody to maintain positive cash flow? So uh, I like the line of credit option. We've used that in our organization. But mm. what also has helped us is really knowing what our priorities are. And in the nonprofit world, you know, we have to be really careful about how we uh, manage the resources uh, that come uh, into uh, our organization. So when we have found ourselves in cash flow uh, challenge spaces, 
we've actually had to ask ourselves, so what are the things that have to be done in order for our organization to continue to thrive? So we know very uh, clearly what our our priorities and we keep the priorities going. And so guess what? Some people won't get lunch at some meetings and uh, we'll have to kind of. No lunch? Yeah. Wow, lunch. Yeah. I thought there was such a thing it's as a free lunch. It's the nonprofit lunch. world. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate covered strawberries for everybody every day. Now Thrivers, I yeah. have uh, the five moves I want to walk you through here and I want to go back and forth with Z a little bit and Z can I add a little bit of, uh, a little bit of detail to this here. But okay. move number one is you need to make a line item list of all of your income. You need to know where all your income's coming from. Yeah. And you you got to be conservative, right? When you're looking at your income, you're trying to figure out where you're at. I mean, you got to add that up. You got to know what's coming in. Yeah, you have to know because then it can lead to the other steps that you're going to you're going to go over here in a second, but and you have to be realistic with that too. You have to be like, I'm going to sell a million smokers this month. A well, million? that may not be the case. <laughs> that may that, then again, if, unless you're Oklahoma Joe's, you probably haven't sold 2 million smokers. Yeah. Now for him though, once he got his sales up, he might say, I'm going to sell 50,000 this month or whatever. But you want to be realistic. And I think you'd even want to do that with giving at the church, right, yep. Pastor? I mean, you want to be sort of, you know, conservative in your estimates? Absolutely. We're always conservative in our estimates. Now, the second move is you want to have a list of your line item expenses. And I find that in the detail, that's where the devil is. And you mentioned that, Pastor, but you'd said that, um, you know, the, make sure, making sure you know what your, basically know what your, your priorities are. And I think when you go through the line item list of expenses, you can kind of go, whoa, we're spending that much money on bagel? bagels? You know, I mean, it's kind of, a, that's a lot of bagels. I mean, it's a lot of donuts. So, Z, I want to ask you, with the optometry, you know, when you look at your expenses and you kind of, do you set like hard guardrails where you say, team, you have a, a certain budget and you can't spend more than this after you've approved that budget? Yes. And, what, and what, what I basically do is I break it down to percentages. In other words, I tell my manager payroll uh, can't be over 14%. Okay, mm -hmm. now that doesn't include doctors, that doesn't include everything, but the, some of the hourly people, I give her percentages, and so then you say, well, percentages? Yeah, because every month, and, and you know, once you've been in business for over a year, you can get those comp or comparative numbers from last year as you're looking at your numbers. You're not flying in the dark so much, and most businesses have a, a cyclic portion to them, like in optometry, for instance, we have two peak times. One is uh, first quarter with uh, income tax return money seems to stimulate our business, and then back to school is another stimulated time. And so, you know, those months you're going to have more in payroll. So if I said, hey, you can only spend so much in payroll, then those busier months, it doesn't make sense. So I break it down more to percentages. And once you've been open for more than a year, you can see those trends in your business. And hopefully, one of the things that I, Clay, one of the things that I notice that when people get into cash flow issues is because their business is not growing mm. and that's why this show is so important you know uh, horrible statistic eight out of ten businesses shut down they don't make it and cash flow is a you know is one of the big reasons why they don't. In other words, they don't have enough money. They didn't raise enough capital. Um, they don't have enough money to weather that bad season, that bad storm that comes along. And this is a very pertinent. I'm glad you're breaking. The, I'm glad you're breaking this down today. I feel like what you're doing here is you're being realistic, which could kind of seem negative. You know, I'm trying to celebrate my Valentine's, and you're going, <laughs> "Hey, if you're not growing, that's why you're probably having some cash flow issues." So I'm going to refute what I believe to be just complete negativity, aka being truthful. I'm going to refute that with a, a win of the week. Z, are you ready for this win of the week? I, I would. I love wins of the week. Now we have a thriver in Florida. They have a pizzeria, and this is their win of the week. It's coming in hot and fresh. They're, said they're located in Gateway, Florida, near Fort Myers. And they said in the past four weeks, they're having massive success with their Dream 100. Their Dream 100. They have new customers Woo! coming in. That's so they made a list of businesses to market to. There you go. And now they are growing. And so the thing is, yes, you've got to watch those expenses, but you also have to focus on the marketing. And I have a notable quote. We'll see. I'm going to read this to you. Oh, please do. This please is do. from Benjamin Franklin, the, the inventor of the Skullet. It's a modified... <laughs> <laughs> mullet. He says here, beware of little expenses. A small leak will sink a great ship. Oh, he had a lot of party wow. in the back. I tell you what. He had, had a lot of, business, of lettuce in the back. He was business up front, but he was a lot of party in the back. But you know, you know what that, uh, you know what the dream, the dream 100 success in that other company makes me want to do? What does it make you want to do? Well, when we come back from the break, I'll, I'll tell you. Because it, it, it gives me a certain feeling that I want to share with the Thrivers. I don't know if it's just because of our sponsorship, but everything makes me want to go to Oklahoma Joe's. No matter what happens, <laughs> it always causes me to feel that way. Stay tuned. 
right, Thrive Nation, welcome back into the conversation on the Thrive Time Show business coaching radio show where we break down the proven strategies, systems, and processes of millionaires, billionaires, and everyday success stories. And today we're getting into the mailbag. Great people like you from all over the country. Specifically, we have a very, very uh, good question that came to us via Connecticut. This is from a Thriver in Connecticut who says, how do we solve cash flow issues? And so we talked about, uh, Z was talking about encouraging this person to really make sure you you're growing your business. I mean, make sure you're you're growing it. You're not just sitting there looking at it and it's kind of going, these are my expenses, but we're not growing. Pastor Owens was talking about making sure you know your priorities, making sure you're not just spending on things you don't need. And I'm breaking down kind of the, the five, kind of the, the wrap up of the five moves you need to do. One is you need to look at those line item income uh, sources. You want to make sure you know where all your income's coming from, type it up, add it up in a spreadsheet, look at it, know where it's coming, be aware of it, eyes wide open, don't be shocked. Move number two, line item those expenses. Know what things cost, know where your money's going, okay? A budget is telling your money where to go, not having a budget's asking you, yeah, asking yourself, hey, where did my money go? <laughs> so that's that's a budget, okay? Now the third is you have to collect. You have to collect. Now Z mentioned it this a little bit here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna really get, get uh, kind of spiritual on this, Z. Here we go. Back in the day, there's a young man at a chamber event. He walks up to me and he says, a chamber of commerce luncheon. And he says, man, my video company, it's growing, but the more it grows, the more poor I get. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I'm running out of cash. Well, he's given his clients terms. I'm going, hey, listen, you're a wedding videographer. Just charge the client half down to book the date and the other half down when you deliver the video. And don't, he goes, man, I have a lot of brides and grooms I've been chasing down for six months to get the video. And I'm going, oh. bro, you, you, you can't be doing that. Well, then I... Over time, as I began coaching clients all around the world, I started realizing that contractors have this problem, drywall people have this problem, uh, uh, swimming pool installers have this problem, uh, doctors have this problem. Z, talk to me about collecting and kind of the, uh, that, that um, one, how do I do it? But then also kind of the emotional thing where I'm like, I feel kind of bad that I'm having people pay me, you know, what they owe me. I mean, what's the process of collecting and how do I deal with feeling bad if people owe me? I've got to have a, I got to get a taser. A taser? <laughs> I got to get a taser. Okay, yeah, sure. Well, because I was teasing earlier before the break about about a, a real good feeling that I Ow! had. Ow! And then we come out of the break, Ow! and you don't even, I got to just be able to Ow! Ow! Just, Turn here, it off. Pastor Ray, hit Turn, that taser Turn right it off. Got watch your Facebook Turn Live. It. You can. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover collecting here in just a minute, but I, I had a very, you know, first of all, it's Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day. That's why you're looking so lovely. And if you're wondering where to take your loved one, you know, over at... Well, Oklahoma Joe's has what we call meat candy. Oh, wow. It's technically not candy. It's meat, but it's so good. It's like meat candy. And they'll engrave your name on it. Like you yeah. can put like, I love you, like this little sweetheart. Yeah. They'll, they'll engrave yeah, it on it. We've yeah, never asked them to do it, but I, I'm sure they would. Follow that up with some baked beans. And I mean, your your sweetheart <laughs> is going to love you forever. Wow. Trust me. Now, we, you did a victory before the break. Yeah, we had a you big did, win. You did a victory and they had, what they've done, they'd gotten on their dream 100. You may be saying, what's the dream 100? That's right now, if you own a business, you're managing a business, you want to grow your business, if I asked you, what are your top 10? And then that would lead to what are your top 100 uh, clients you want to go after or businesses you want to try to sell to or your top 100, okay? In other words, your target. And you said that they had great success because they made their top 100 and then they were purposeful in going and trying to get them. They're doing it. And you know, you know what? That makes one play this song. Oh, wow. Well. Because anytime you're focused on your... Dream 100, George Michael, on Valentine's Day, St. Valentine's Day. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. I love it. It is a beautiful thing. Go see? dream. Go get those 100. Now, okay, it, now collecting. Now, now collecting. Yeah, I, I want to celebrate them for a second, though. You know, Henry Ford says it's hard to build a reputation based off of what you're going to do. Oh, yes. That's right. Yes. Now, let me tell you one thing that Pastor Owens does over here with the Metropolitan Baptist Church. At the end of every service, you remind us of the, the church's vision. You bet. And with, can you kind of explain to the Thrivers out there kind of what your church's vision? Because you have a vision, and, and it does involve you know, people inviting people out to the church. Right. So we have what we call a path. Uh, the path includes prayer, attendance, tithes and offerings, and hospitable invitations. Every Sunday when we gather, 
I remind every member of the church that it's your responsibility to grow our church by bringing your friends, bringing your relatives, bringing your associates. And so that is our strategy for growth. And Thrivers, if you're listening right now, the Dream 100 system, if you want to learn how to implement that on February 24th and February 25th, we have our next in-person Thrive Time Workshop. And it is, I'm telling you what, Thrivers, if you've not been to one of these before, we get into the specifics. It starts at 7 a.m. It goes until 3 p.m. You can ask any business question you've ever had, and we will teach you specifically how to implement the Dream 100 system that our good friends are doing right out there in Florida and Thrivers all around the world are doing. Broadcasting live from the center of the universe, you're listening to The Thrive Time Show. So now we'll get back into the boring stuff. Okay, people want to talk about there, marketing. Yeah, yeah. Marketing, yay, yeah, but then it gets into, you know, expenses. So anyway, so you got to collect, Z. How do I collect, man? I One, how do I do it? Two, what if I feel bad? <laughs> well, let me tell you a story. Mm. Everybody likes a good story, don't they? Oh, yes. So a young man that I mentor approached me less than a month ago and said, hey, um, man, I need, I'm a, my business is growing so fast. I need, I need more money. Mm. I'm like, okay, well, we'll break this down. Are you making money? Um, yeah, I'm making money, but uh, I need some more money. Well, how, how, what's your, what's your accounts receivable? How, how quickly are people paying you? Oh, yeah, let me, let me look at that. Mm. Oh, wait a second. This guy hadn't paid me in six months. Oh, oh wait, here's another one hadn't paid me. And so, anyway, calculate by his, his accounts receivable, ARs, we talked about earlier. He had like $48,000 out there in accounts receivable. I know, I, it's, said, I know it seems unethical, but I was actually recording you during that conversation. Oh, no. And I have audio of what you <laughs> oh, said no. to the young man. Oh, no. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. <laughs> no, but so you were going, you're not collecting money? <laughs> well, and, and it was just like a shock. It was like, oh, oh my gosh. And I said, well, first move is you got to, you got to, you got to, be purposeful about getting your money. Well, what do I do? Well, you here's you've got a hammer on them. You can put a, a worker's lien or a um, a lien on the properties because you're doing these appraisals on them. So you can actually put a lien on those properties, and they don't want that. They don't want. <laughs> They don't want the whammy. So he sends out this letter, you know, and all of a sudden, bam, 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 checks start coming in. Oh, wow. But the idea was, is that the thing he was doing, he was put paying out of his pocket day one, right? Mm. And then he wouldn't collect the money for 30, 60, 90, and in one case, up to six months later. What? And he wasn't really, he didn't wow. really, it kind of sneaks up on you. So when you're collecting, number one, you have to be purposeful in that. You have to know exactly every day what your accounts receivable are, how much money is out there on the street, your money that somebody else is holding holding on to okay and a lot of times they'll stretch you out as long as you'll let them I mean a lot of people will do that to you and you maybe say well though I'm sure they're gonna get around to paying me you know one of these days they said that you know they're gonna pay me soon I have a move that I would encourage 90% of the listeners to do it works 90% of the time and for those of you that it doesn't apply we'll have some other strategies for you but I would recommend that you no longer invoice people and that you just charge them and send them a, a receipt so example hey sir I want you to do drywall on my home great absolutely so it'll be 3000 down to get started and the remaining balance is done when I finish the wall as opposed to you doing the work, mailing them an invoice, them saying, I didn't get it in the mail. Then you resend it, they resend it, they act like they oh, didn't yeah. get it and it becomes a circular thing of you going, what was your email again? Well, my email is this. What's your mailing address? And it's just over and over and occasionally that happens where they send it to the wrong address or something but really, you just want to kill that whole invoice game if at all possible. Just ask directly for the money. Try to get it up front. Now, Thrivers, when we come back, we're going to get more into cash flow and how to fix cash flow problems. Stay tuned. ThriveTimeShow.com. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back into the Inspiration Conversation. Today, we're talking about getting you in the know with the cash flow. We're answering your questions uh, for the Thrivers, just like you all around the world, have submitted. They've emailed us, info at thrive15.com. By the way, you can too. Email info at thrive15.com. Real questions. We've got real answers. This is what they asked. How do we solve cash flow issues? And this is from a Thriver in Connecticut. If you missed the earlier steps, go check it out, thrivetimeshow.com. We're moving on to move number five here. You have to ask, and we talked about it a little bit, but uh, Pastor, there's that old Bible verse that says, uh, you, what is it, you have not because you because ask you not. Ask not right? now, I'm probably taking that out of context and I'm probably screwing it up, but I want to start with you, my friend. Why do you just have to eventually ask? Right, because I think some people depend on us to be intimidated by the ask. So mm. in uh, the nonprofit world, you have to be able to, 
to ask because uh, the expectation is you will not receive until you uh, call uh, it out and ask people. In our case, we're asking people for the pledges that they've already promised. They say they are going to give $10,000 to the building fund over five years. Year three comes along and we're uh, only at about 2,500. It's my job to make a phone call and say, hey, Joe, we really need uh, your pledge in. So you got to ask. You seem like such a cheerful and nice guy. I always see you being a nice yeah. and cheerful guy. Yeah. Do you ever have to go into that like, uh, so what, uh, Joe, uh, this is a pasta. I'll let pipe <laughs> here. I was going. I mean, do you ever have to get I into a little accent. bit intense? Yeah, or no? we do. Or? We do. Because, you know, the church is also a business. And people, not only have people made pledges, but actually there are some cases where people owe us money. We have property that the church owns and we have tenants. And guess what? Tenants feel like, oh, it's the church. I don't have to pay it's them. It's cool. Their money. They're not depending on this. And, you know, the pastor would never come down on me. Absolutely. I got to ask you this. I have to, you, you can totally not answer if you want. You can yep. plead the fifth there. Do you ever have people it pull the whole God card as a reason uh, to not pay you? Does that you ever bet, happen? You bet. It happens? They ask for grace. Oh, they ask right. for grace. Yeah, that's what they call it. They, you know, frame it as grace. Well, you know, grace doesn't mean we doesn't have to, we don't have to pay. You have a grace period. <laughs> and after the grace period, what? There's a penalty added, usually, right? Yeah. The, the other's yeah. Uh, the cost for grace sometimes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not the personal. It's just, uh, it's just business. It's just not business. cheap grace, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, Z, I want to ask you this because we're, we're moving on to our fifth move, and this is one that I know you can speak to. And Pastor hit on it earlier, but he's talking about priorities. And I laugh all the time because anytime the government uh, realizes that, because what happens if you if we own a business, this is what happens. We have, okay. a, we have a budget. All and right. we go, well, this much is coming in. Okay. And uh, this much is coming out. Okay. And we can't have the amount going out be more than coming in. Okay. And so we got to balance the budget. Oh, that's crazy there. Eh? <laughs> now, this is not a, a political show or a Norwegian political show, but here's the no. thing is is that occasionally in the government, what happens is they can't agree on what they're going to cut. So they're like, yeah, we'll just go ahead. Yeah, since we can't agree, let's go ahead and do both plans. And so they spend money. They spend money they don't have. Now they're printing money. Eventually, though, the government has to do this thing called... You know, A, they go, we're going to defund the government or someone refuses to print more money. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. ethics of the whole a government shutdown. Government and, this is the, and here's the press release. You see it all the time. It says this. Okay. The government has now decided to lay off or to pause the payments of non-essential employees. What does that mean? What is a non-essential uh, uh, employee? I mean, because in business, <laughs> who's the non-essential employee? I mean, are you, do you most of them? I don't know. I mean, I just want to ask you this because okay. you, you mentioned right. pastor, you mentioned the priorities and making sure you're spending money where you should spend right. it. But see, I see a lot of business owners who are hiring people who don't need to work there. They don't, they don't do, they don't serve any core purpose. Well, and then that's, that's why you have to sit there and say to yourself, what you have to, a job description, and is that job description important for you to produce your product, for you to make your service, um, for you to run your business? And a lot of people, you come into, a lot, a lot of business consultants will go into a business. Mm. And, and really, it's a fancy term for, I'm going to show you who you can get rid of. You know, oh, because wow. employee cost is what usually runs up in a business because, you know, you let your management say, hey, well, I need I need, uh, you know, I need Billy's not getting it done. I need another Billy. I need seven more guys <laughs> to I help need, Billy with the SEO. And with Billy, Billy busy. needs an assistant, you he know, needs an because assistant, everybody, yeah. every one of my employees, I don't care what they do. They're always they are, Every one of them needs an assistant. By <laughs> well, the way. Billy has a problem I mean, with his sciatic nerve and he's also got some anxiety. <laughs> he can't, uh, <laughs> you know, so he needs a psychologist. And he needs a service pet, too. Oh, Probably nice. a dog or maybe a cat. We're he not could sure. Totally see, but he still needs a dog. He needs well, just a, it's a comfort dog. I mean, he gets stressed sometimes because he doesn't have an assistant. So, Z, you went in. Right. You, we, we, you know, what happened is you get asked all the time. They say, Z, can you business coach me? And then you go, Hey, listen, we have these in-person workshops that you yeah. can come to. We have one on February twenty-fourth and twenty-fifth. You can learn all about it, Thrivers, at thrivetimeshow.com. We still have about 35 tickets left for you. And but what happened is uh, you, recently you were not able to go in to, to this business in Connecticut. You could not go. And so well, we had to send in Belichick. We had to send him in. And so oh, we, no. have, we have audio oh, no. of Belichick talking he to the employees. He has, he, has, he We have audio of Belichick. He was talking to the front desk guy. Oh, no. And the front desk guy wasn't answering the phone. And he's like, hey, listen, I need you to answer the phone. And the guy says, well, I need someone to remind me. And so the, the, <laughs> Bel this is what Belichick said to him. He says, just do your job. I don't try to make too much. 
And so that was, I mean, it's amazing that we have the audio, but it's also, I mean, that's, that's at yeah. the end of the day, if someone's not doing their job, you got to move on, right? You got, you got to move on. And what happens is, is you get a lot of business owners that they don't want to fire because uh, they just don't. I mean, they have their, their reasons and their reasons may be honorable, but it's not, they're not putting their business first. They're not putting themselves first. And that's a problem in and of itself. But what happens is they just keep hiring because that person wow. is getting the job done. And then what they do is they say, well, I'm too busy. You know, I've got too much to do. I need, I need help. And pretty soon you have three people doing the work of, of one person. Let me give you a fact. Oh, fact. Right, you want a fact? This just in from our home office. You take a bucket of water. Mm. This is an analogy I use all the time. You take a bucket of water and you pour it into a room. You're going to have water in all four corners. If the floor is level, that is. I mean, obviously, if the floor is not level, it's not. And what does that mean? That means if you give someone a job, they will figure out a way to look busy, to act time, time busy. Time out, time out, time out. This, wow. this sounds like a challenge for the Thrivers. Get out a bucket of water. Get out a bucket. Get a bucket of water. H2O. I'm getting it. One second. Don't pressure me. I'm filling it up now. Two Fill parts it up. hydrogen, one part Is this a, a, a gallon or a five gallon? How big of a bucket do I how need? Big a bucket, how big a boy are you? How big a bucket do you have? <laughs> All right. So it's a, four, it's a, it's a six by six room and I've got a bucket. It's like a closet. I got it. My bucket. A big bucket. Five gallon. And you may save yourself. There's no way this. I can I can cover the floor with this bucket of water. There's no way. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I can't get it done. I can I do can't it. get it done. I know what you do. You start pouring. You're like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's going to all four. It's covering the entire floor. What? He said it. What happened? It. It's like a magician. It's, 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 it's a water magic trick. I've never heard this story before. I love this story. Yeah, it's true. And so what happens then is, is that you, you have that person, they say, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm busy. I'm real busy. I mean, I've got these 10 things to do all week, and I just, you know, I need an assistant because, you know, I can probably only, you know, I can't, you know. I can I mean, get, I'm I can get right. two of them. I mean, quality or quantity. I can get two done with the quality, <laughs> but the quantity, I can probably down, you know, just two items, basically. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's amazing when you, when you challenge that person, say, hey, listen, here's the deal. Um, however you want to incentivize that person, say, listen, to do your job, it's crazy anymore. It's kind of like, hey, wait a second, I did my job. I showed up on time. Don't I, aren't I worth a whole lot more than just, you know, to, to not and you're like listen I'm paying to do it here's a challenge for you get it done and instead of saying you know what okay if you can't get it done and it's something reasonable to do i.e. water cover the floor then what you need to say to yourself is this really a long term person for me or you can just keep hiring them assistants to help them get the job done and guess what by the end of the day you look down your payroll's exploded and now you're kind of going I'm not making any money I would definitely uh-huh. recommend queuing up some James Bond music and challenging them give them a big challenge say this is 007 this is your task you gotta get it done you gotta challenge them see. And then once you establish what their ceiling, when, when, once you establish what their high watermark is, you're like, see, you can do 10 of those a week. You can. You did it. And here's that thing I gave you for challenging to do it. And now obviously you set the bar that you know they can get 10 fill in the blanks done for the week. Now Thrivers, when we come back, Pastor Ray Owens and Dr. Z are going to answer another question from a Thriver just like you. Stay tuned. Thrive Time Show. All right, Thrive Nation, Green Country, our good friends out there in Tennessee. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio, the show where we break down the best practice systems, tech, the, the, the tactics, the strategies of millionaires, billionaires, and everyday entrepreneurial success stories. And we're talking about today the answers to the questions that you have. We have Thrivers all around the world emailing us questions. And now we have a Thriver right here in Oklahoma that has this question for us. They say, what is the best way to mystery shop. Well, first off, let me frame it real quick here. So a mystery shopper, the concept of a mystery shopper is somebody who you hire to go into the business. You're paying them, by the way, to go into your business and act like a customer to see if they can catch your team, either A, taking days off or B, doing their job correctly. But you have kind of an independent uh, look, a third party look from somebody who cares about the success or failure of your systems. Z, first off, why is it so important to have a mystery shopper in your business if you've never done it before well this may sound crazy what and i i don't i don't often enjoy sounding crazy (laughs) this may sound crazy and pastor you can actually i'd like for you to dovetail on this but when when i'm around when my employees see me physically in the building around in the same space that they're in occupying walking around they act differently than when i'm not around. Well, first off, when you walk in, this music is always queued up, and it always makes it kind of weird when this when this song is queued up. So let me get your music that you walk into. It's sort of you walk in, and the Braveheart theme is queued up. People start to go. 
This must be. I think I think he's here. Where is he? And so I think if you would stop queuing up your own theme music when you walked in, that would be. Yeah, but I, I didn't get dressed up for nothing. You know, when Pastor Owens walks into the fight. church, you know the song that's always played. I mean, if you hear him, it's not actually played through speakers. They can just feel it. But this oh, is the song. Feel it? Yeah, they. What is love? It just oh, walks yeah. in, and they know that must be Pastor Owens. He's. They know I'm coming. Yeah, don't so, hurt me. So Pastor Owens, break that down. Why do people act a little bit different when the pastor's on the scene, when the boss is on the scene, when the owner's on the scene? Yeah, authority is very powerful. And when the authority is president, we all line up and we're working hard to impress. Mm. Um, and so, believe it or not, even in a nonprofit organization like the church, mystery shoppers can be very helpful. People who experience the church, whether they're contacting to set up an appointment or just coming for a Sunday morning worship need to have a certain kind of experience. And so every now and then I have friends, usually when they're from out of town, I'll say, come you know, to the church and I want you to make notes of everything that you experienced. Were you touched three times? So we have a rule. When you come into that building, you ought to have three people speak to you in some way. And that does happen, by the way, yep. the Metropolitan Baptist. Yep. And by the way, for people who aren't familiar with your church, where can they find more about the Metropolitan yeah. Baptist? www.metropolitanbc.org is where you'll find us uh, on the World Wide Web. Check us out on our Facebook page, Metropolitan uh, Baptist Church. Uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, through that social media platform as well. Now, if a past up for anybody like myself who doesn't trust the internet, yeah. uh, does that, uh, can we drive out there or do we have to be on the World Wide Web? Because I don't want to get a virus. No, come on and see us out at 1228 West Apache or give us a call, 918-425-5402. And guess what? If you don't have a good experience with that call, then you can call me directly, 918-991-6809, and Ooh. I'll get that call. All right. Yeah. Now, here's the deal, Thrivers. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Z kind of break this down like fractions. Here's the deal. Yep. I see a business without a mystery shopper, a business without a third party audit going on as a business where people are taking days off people begin wow. to take so they're, they're they're coming to work but they're not doing their job and so what happens i went i got a chance you know the super bowl uh, just just you know the, the patriots it's been a while since the victory but there's an afterglow that will carry until approximately <laughs> oh, no. march of 2018 it's oh, an no. afterglow he's still talking so about this i went over there to, to belichick's office and i said <laughs> sir i said sir um you know uh what advice would you have for the thrivers who are saying you know i don't see the value why why the thrivers who are saying why do i need a mystery shopper and this is bill belichick this is audio of him from the Patriots Super Bowl victory parade. He's chanting, the audience, the, the crowd is like at the parade. He could be chanting anything in the world. He could say, go Pats or go Boston or thank you. They give him the mic and he's chants, no days off. And everyone around him is like, there's like 3 million people gathered who are like, I don't know if we want to chant this. Is this, <laughs> is this like a communist pep rally? No. no days off. Well, I just hope you give, you give us a day off of the Pats, which, you, you know, you know, you, you follow his, you follow that because every day we got to have a little bit of Pat yeah. love on here. Every did day. I, did every I tell day. you about the Thrive Nation and the Benevolent? the benevolence they sent me this towel here right here okay this is a, a patriot this is a patriot's gift the super bowl towel then they sent me a tom brady pin then they sent me this little thing here this uh uh, uh this little uh, towel they just sent me a patriot's chair that's now in the in the conference room it's a patriot's it's an embroidered chair it's super nice Z. Broadcasting live from the center of the universe, you're listening to The Thrive Time Show. So the benevolence of our Bostonians is unbelievable, the Pat Nation. <laughs> now, I want to ask you this, Z. We're getting into the mystery shopping. How do I go about doing it? Now, I know why I need to do it, but how do I do it, my friend? Z, what do I do? Well, here's the deal. You see, in life, you expect what you expect. Oh, nice, nice. And when you talk about people's trying to do the things that they're supposed to do, to send someone in to check on them. Do you want me to put them in the, in the river? Well, no, not necessarily. They may not have to swim with the fishes if they're doing the right thing. <laughs> uh, we'll put them in concrete shoes, see? Concrete shoes at the bottom of the river. Well, if they're not doing their thing, then yeah. I just want to put them in there anyway. It's just something I do. It's my default move. I, 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 if you own a business, I promise you this. 
If you own a business and you walk up to any one of your employees today, right today. now, right now, just walk out of your office, okay, you're listening to me right now and you're like, okay, I gotta, hold on, I can't, I gotta still listen to you, I said, can't walk out yet, but hold on. Walk up to them and say, hey, um, did you do your job today? Are you doing it with excellence? Are you doing, are you following your checklist? Are you doing a great job? How many of them do you think are gonna look up and you say, no, actually I've been on Facebook all day and I'm <laughs> texting my brother about uh, where we're gonna eat pizza tonight and uh, I've uh, stole a bunch of pins and uh, you know, post-it notes from uh, the office supply room. <laughs> We have a, a, a thriver who uh, apparently writes the text for uh, teleprompters. That's his job. He writes oh, the cool. text. And uh, he, he called in, and I've got audio from what happened at the newscast. He took a day off. Oh, no. Oh, here no. we go. Oh, no. Well, that's going to do it for all of us here at Channel 4 News. Oh, no. You stay classy, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy. Uh, he put a question mark <laughs> Robert. at the end of it. He messed up there, so he yeah, took a day off. Yeah, and the thing about it is is that, you know, we get patient complaints. And you're gonna, if you own a business, you're going to get that, okay? And they always say your employee did X, Y, and Z. And you approach that employee and you say, uh, Billy, did Billy. you do X, Y, and Z? Overall, and, I tried really hard. <laughs> and every time across the board, they look at you and no. they say, no. I didn't know. I didn't do X, Y, and Z. I would not do that. And then you think back, well, maybe they that, maybe that patient, maybe that client. Is uh, I gotta just be crazy. honest. I gotta be honest, though. I actually did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the one time. Yeah. Oh, just this one time. So you know that comes in your mind. Then you're going, oh man, Billy was so passionate about saying he didn't do X, Y, and Z. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I didn't. I couldn't even do it. And then you're sitting there thinking, well, maybe that, maybe that, uh, you know, maybe that client that came in was upset about something. Someone cut him off on the highway on the way here, and they're taking it out on poor little Billy. So then you're kind of going, who do you believe, and what's going on? And of course, you believe, you know, that Billy did it. You and you coach Billy up, and you try not to do it. I only did it because most people in the office do it that way too <laughs> but what a mystery shopper gives you it gives you someone one that you trust okay mm. and and then what you, when they come in they say hey billy did x y and z now you know billy did x y and z yeah. you, know, you see what i'm saying so if they said hey billy was rude billy was this billy said this then all of a sudden you can now you have a source that you can believe and then you can start managing off of that instead of kind of going well okay who do i believe here this this person i don't know that i don't know what their motives are and or or Billy here who can you can sometimes be a little bit you know squirrely and whether you're fixing your cash flow or setting up your mystery shopping or doing anything writing a sermon no matter what you have to do as part of your job you're going to have to learn to time block and coming up next year we have a thriver in Nashville Tennessee Raven who emails us and says how do I block out time when so many sales related burning fires Ooh. come up every day. He says, how do I uh, time block when so many sales related burning fires come up every day? But really that could be, how do I block out time for anything when so many burning fires come up every day? And so I'm excited to pick the brain of Pastor Ray because how many people go out to your ch church these days there, Pastor Ray? We have 2,500 members. We see about a thousand of them each Sunday. And I, I just, I, I'm sincerely very interested about this because as a pastor, there's got to be always somebody who's yep. sick, somebody who's dying, someone who's getting married, someone who needs counseling, somebody who can't find a parking space. There's got to be a lot of burning fires. And Dr. Z, with hundreds of employees, there's got to always be a burning fire. And, and I think the real question is, you know, how do you find time to get stuff done when you have beyond just your job to do? When you got to manage an organization? I mean, that's a big question. Question Z. Oh, it's a big question. I've got some secret sauce. I've got. I'm so. I'm just bursting with oh, this information. I can't. <laughs> when you said secret sauce, enough. is sauce? Is that the Oklahoma Joe's barbecue sauce? Is that what that is? It's a component of it. But you want to stay tuned for this for this question. Thrivetimeshow.com. All right, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Oklahomies. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio. I'm super excited. I've lost the ability to talk. I'm just so excited. Thrivers, we are so excited to, to, to tell you how much we love and appreciate you. It's so fun uh, being able to connect with you, being able to converse with you on a daily basis, receiving your questions, and we just want to show you some love. And so inside the box that rocks today, uh, we have two incredible guys here with us. We have Pat. Pastor Ray Owens, he's the senior pastor over there at the Metropolitan Baptist Church. It is an unbelievable, growing, thriving church, a great place if you're looking for a family church, a place where they really love families, kids, 
unbelievable praise and worship, great teaching and preaching. It's an unbelievable place to go. That's the Metropolitan Baptist Church. And we have the man with the plan, the co-host with the moos, the optometrist turned tycoon. It is Dr. Robert Zellner. Sir, how are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. Hey, Thrivers. Happy Valentine's Day. Clay, you know, if you, if you love someone, you do something special for them, right? Uh, Especially on this day, St. Valentine's Day. I'd buy him some baked beans. I'd get him some beans. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how I show him, I love Don't get him some meat candy over yeah. Oklahoma Joe's. No, I tell you what, though. If you're sitting there thinking to yourself, it's Valentine's Day. What do I get my left one? Mm. Now, what, what do I do? Well, I've got a suggestion for you. Of course, there's always the candy and flowers move, and there's those moves, little teddy bears. Those are kind of nice, and little bears you can cuddle up with. But if you really love someone, what you do is you go on Thrive thrivetimeshow.com that's thrivetimeshow.com and you'd get on there and you would buy them what you would buy them one of our in-person workshops where they could come out a ticket so they could come out on february 24th in 10 days 10 days february 24th and 10 25th, days and we're going to teach them those two days everything they need to know about starting and growing a business everything yes everything they need to know we have wow. uh 13 points that we go over uh we go over time management we go over hiring, firing. We go over advertising, branding. I mean, it's endless. And then we have it, our hands on. We you leave here with templates. We actually let you put your little fingers on stuff and do stuff. And it's limited. I, mean, I think we only have like thirty five more tickets for the next one. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the line item list of what we're gonna teach you there. Well, why not? We're gonna teach you how to achieve your financial revenue goals. Ooh. How to set those goals. Two, we're gonna talk about your de- determining how do you how do you, uh, your personal finances, determining your break even point, how to save money for a rainy day, those kind of things. Move number three, we're gonna teach you about how to time block, how to block out time to get things done. We're gonna talk to you about how to build a unique value proposition, improving your branding, how to market, how to do sales. Con- Conversion, conversion, internet advertising, uh, management, leadership, I mean, human resources, anything you want to know, if you ever wanted to know about how to start and grow a business, we're going to teach you these things in person. And so we start at 7 a.m. on each day and we teach for 45 minutes. And then we break for 15 minutes and you can ask any question you want. That's what, that's why we have the break. Cause you can get up and stretch, grab a coffee, but you can also ask any question you want. We keep doing that till lunch. We give you an hour break for lunch. Then we come back until three. We do it two days in a row. It's on a Friday and Saturday, and I'm just telling you what, if you Google Thrive 15 conferences or Thrive 15 reviews, you can see uh, great companies like uh, Chevron, uh, Maytag, O'Reilly's Auto Parts, never heard of them, uh, Hewlett Packard, never heard of them. You can, all those companies, they're all companies that have hired me to come out and speak over the years, and I'm just telling you what, we're bringing it right here to Tulsa, and it's a game changer. You need to book a ticket, and because, because, we, have, because we have a scholarship program available, if you couldn't previously afford it for whatever reason, I am going to guarantee you that not a single person will be denied due to lack of financial resources. We've made this available for you. We're passionate. We just want to show our love, Z. Okay, so I send out my loved one. She wants to start up this thing, you see, and uh, you're probably going to, what, scam her, upsell her? I mean, you're going to, you know, so um, you get her there and then you, what, you can't leave till she writes a check or two or a credit card? I mean, what's the deal? What's, what's the hook? Well, here's the, the hook? here's the interesting thing about it is when you buy a, a ticket, we actually give you one year's access to the world world's best online business school. That's an extra bonus. Okay. Then, then we don't have anything else to sell you. When you get out of here, we give you all the templates, all the tools, everything you need. And if somebody else needs one-on-one business coaching, we have that too. So really, it's all about changing your life. Show yourself some love and show your loved one some love. Increase your income, your capacity, because I'm telling you what, once you knock out the, the financial part of so little of life is about money. Money's just something you need. It's like, it's like this, see, it's like putting uh, gas in my car. I, I can't tell you that I'm super passionate. I don't know, Pastor Ray, I don't know if when you when you put unleaded gas into that super sweet car you have, do you ever get really passionate about the purchasing of the fossil fuels? I mean, are you into that? Nothing passionate about that. I don't ever recall having done any cartwheels behind. <laughs> Let me ask you this. It always says when you're pumping gas, it always yeah. says don't make cell phone calls while pumping the gas. You know, have you ever done that just to kind of, you to, just to be kind of risky? Uh, yeah, I have. For adrenaline? Yeah, I really have. <laughs> well, Z just went skiing and I'm afraid of heights, speed, travel, and I, I, will, I will never ski while, I would never ski down a black diamond, but I would pump gas with my cell phone on. Just the thought I could blow up, that gives me that adrenaline yeah. that you probably get while going down the, the 
slopes there. Is it? Oh yeah, yeah. Winter Park. Shout out to Winter Park. I was just there over the weekend for my son, and uh, we there was eight of us guys there, and just had a had a blast. Uh, you know, it's it's funny now. The now the new move is they have these little bicycles. People are actually sitting on like a bike like thing, um, and they have uh, instead of wheels or they have the ski you know skis on them, and and they're riding and they're going down the slopes on these on these bikes. Are you being like serious? Bicycles. Are you yeah, making this up? I I am not making this up. And one lady actually had hers where she was kind of standing on it. it looked like the old kind of sea dudes where you stood on them, you know? And and they're going down the mountains and I'm just going, oh my gosh. That just it seems like it's cheating. Well, Thrivers, here, here's what here's the, here's the point I'm getting at. Work with me on this. When you go down the slope, that's what life is all about. When you get to your destination, that's what life is all about. But but you're not passionate about buying fossil fuels, and you're probably not passionate <laughs> about riding in the, that, that a chairlift, okay? And, yeah. to, and to me, and to you, Z, that's kind of what a business is like. The business is the vehicle to get us where we want to go. It's not the destination. I mean, having a building a business isn't the end-all, be-all. It's, it's, the goal is to build a business that can serve you, Z. Right, and then then you can do the things that you're passionate about doing. You can help the people you need to help that you're called to. You can spend the money wherever you want to spend it. You can you can help your family. You can do the things that you say. Hey, if I gave you X number of dollars, what would you do with it? And that's that's you fill in the blank. And that's what a business is all about. And that's what we're here. That's our heart. Is it's not about seeing how much money you can get. We want financial freedom for you. We want like four scumps said the movie he said you know when he hit that we invested in the apple and he made all that money he goes oh yeah he goes oh money that's one less thing i have to worry about now <laughs> that's exactly let's hurry up and get let's, let's build yeah. that successful company and get on to live in life let's get it done now thrivers here's a question from a great thriver just like you from nashville tennessee you raven robinson writes how do i block out time when so many sales related burning fires come up every day and i'm gonna paraphrase how do i block out time z when there's many burning fires every day no matter what kind of business i'm involved in well i'm gonna go so i'm gonna go a little bit different route okay i'm gonna go a little bit different now because this makes this topic makes me crazy well that's twice now valentine's day and i threw out the cray cray term twice <laughs> wow I mean, is there is there a connection there Pastor See, Ray, is there a connection there i don't know Probably love not. is in the air. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, here's what happens is, is that I see people all the time that um, when I ask them, I say, what's the single most important thing in your business? And they, they, they can't answer it. So if you own a business right now, you're managing a business, I'm going to ask you, what's the single most important thing? For example, back when I was seeing patients, when I first started and I was seeing all the patients that came in the door, I didn't have any other doctors that worked for me. The most important thing I could do is when that patient was ready for me to, to be seen is that I was available and in that room seeing them. Okay. And why was that the most important thing? Because that's where I made my money. Okay. Okay, let's, let's put, break it down. So I could have somebody on the phone talking about um, their, their contact lenses they're not seeing clearly. I could have somebody on the phone fussing about Billy at the front desk not being appropriate. <laughs> I could have all kinds of things going on. I could have the radio station calling me saying, hey, you need to re-up your, your radio ad. You need to, hey, is it okay if we run it this Saturday instead of the Saturday after that? Uh, Z, this is your I, cousin, Carl. I wanted to see, uh, uh, just if you can call me back here, I wanted to see if you were going to bring the bacon uh, for the breakfast uh, uh, thing or if I was going to bring the bacon. Uh, just call me back that's my, that's my fourth time calling today. <laughs> yeah, you're not being very receptive. And here's the thing about it is, is that I can time block. I can do all my things. I can sit up all the gateways. I can make it tough to get to me because I've got to do this thing over here. But when it's the most important thing, and uh -oh. that burning fire is that patient in the exam room, everything else whoosh, goes to the back burner. Oh. Everything else goes to the back burner. And I see so many people that the thing that's most important, they're not giving it their full attention. It... It makes me want to say this. First things first. So the wow. young the young lady that wrote in from Nashville and she said, Well, I'm time blocking these burnings these burning fires and sales. Is sales the most important thing? Is it? I don't know. I'm asking you. And if sales is the most important thing, and you've got a fire over here that's keeping that sale from happening, guess what? I don't care if you've time blocked to mm. to to write to add to your Come on. to add to, <laughs> to add to your biography, biography. You know, it's kind of well. I, I always block out 30 minutes to write in my, to journal. It's more of a blogography. It's, it's more of a. It's people want to know, and so I have to let them know. You know, or Facebook. I, I 15 minutes of every hour I block out for Facebook. You know, and so no. The point is, is that whatever is the most important 
thing, and that's the burning fire. Then, then uh, it doesn't okay, matter okay. whether you're burning I, 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 I have some questions. Ray, Raven, Raven has some questions, and I'm sure Pastor uh, Pastor Owens has some questions. So I'm going to kind of tee it up here. Okay. And Pastor Owens, you, you pile on if I'm if I'm not hitting them with the hard okay. questions. Okay. Ask Most away. thrivers all around the world continue to ask this, though. They say, one, well, how do I deal with like it, 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 HR issues? If someone has a, a human resource, an employee of mine, a teammate is having a personal breakdown, a meltdown, whatever. Two, is just social media, man. Social media, people writing bad things. I got to respond to them all. And the third is just like these these dramatic situations in the office. So I want to ask you, Pastor, I mean, what are the things that would eat away your time if you're not careful? Or, or where, where do you see your time going? Yeah, phone calls. My uh, cousin seeing if I'm bringing the beans. Uh, that would be one. But that's not the biggest issue. I mean, I have 2,500 members and they have lots of needs. And I'm really, you know, listening very closely to Dr. Z because you are helping me to focus. My number one priority is my Sunday morning sermon. And do you know, I get calls all week. I get people who are sick. Uh, I get calls about somebody who was having marital problems and they want me now. But if I don't deliver an effective Sunday morning sermon, then the whole thing begins to come apart. Uh, Pastor, I have a, a question. Uh, sorry, yeah. I'm getting your voicemail here again. Uh, I might have missed your call. I don't know. I will. Uh, Pastor, that's this my is, reality. That's your deal, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's usually someone who formulates the go. Uh, Pastor, yeah. I, I, have, I sent you an email, and I, it looks like I already found my answer. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, I just sent you an email. It's just it's an endless yeah. barrage. Yeah. And all I'm saying, Thrivers, is take what Z's advice. Take Z's advice to heart. Figure out what is the main thing. Find out what it is. What what's your job that's going to help you get to where you want to go and uh, do your job. You just got to do the main thing. And Z, Bill Belichick wants to encourage the thrivers. He wants to oh, encourage no. them. Oh, no. <laughs> do your job. Sorry, guys. We're in the after blow up. The Falcons had won. We we you know we'd just be like like little birds around here. Nothing about the Patriots, but now we got to endure. Can I with explain this something to you real quick? Biblically okay. speaking, um, yeah. at no point in the Bible does it does it reference. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's kind of like if the Falcons won, certain parts of the 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 heaven and, and you know Hades equation would have to freeze over. And it's not referenced in the Bible. That's even the thing. Is that is that biblical for for that? I don't even know. I mean, we have a theologian in here, but this was. I don't think it's biblically possible for the Falcons to have won the game. Pastor, is that is that Oh, correct? he's not going to give us a break at all. Is no, it? we got zero break on Valentine's Day even. A lot of love for the Patriots. No, for, no love. No play. love. Well, no, yeah, well, he's, got, he's got a lot of is love. Is it a sign <laughs> of the end times that the Falcons won? Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry, Z. I, just, yeah, I, mean, I digress. It, 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 might, it might be, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dovetail off Pastor Ray just for a second, okay? And he said something very important. Hey, my number one thing is to bring excellence in my sermon on Sunday. And so I have to time block time in there, and then these burning fires pop up in there. And and I'm going to I'm going to empower everybody out there listening. Uh, also, Pastor Ray, a powerful person knows when to say no. Wow. A powerful and person knows when to say what, Z? No, because I've got to do first things first. I'm going to marinate on that. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go to Oklahoma Joe's. Okay. I'm going to get myself some burnt ends, some baked beans. I'm going to head on over to the Metropolitan Baptist Church, kind of eat that in the parking lot while I marinate on what you just said. Now, Thrivers, stay tuned. More great questions coming up next. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back into the conversation. Today it's a mixed bag. It's a lot of fun because we're answering questions from Thrivers just like you. People all over the country are owning businesses, starting businesses, and in fact, 57% of the listening audience, according to Forbes, 57% of Americans want to start a business. And many of you have discovered this crazy thing called the email, where you email us info at thrive15.com. I think almost reluctantly, like, they'll never read it. Like, you're emailing a congressman almost where it's like, oh, I'll write an email, but you know they're probably just going to get you a form response, like, that's a good idea. But no, we're actually, that's what every single show is about. But today we're changing it up a little bit because we're mentioning what specific Thriver has asked the question. So we just talked about it, but Raven Robinson right there in Nashville, Tennessee had a question about time blocking. And before we move on, Z, I want to I want to marinate on that because I have three questions related to time management. And I would like for Coach Calvert of Score Basketball, our incredible guest today on the show, I'd like for him to be able to ask you any time management questions as well because you're sort of like the time management Yoda. You do a lot of things well, but time management is your move. So here are the three questions I'm getting from a lot of thrivers who are emailing in okay this one is how do i say no and not feel bad 
Uh, me? You yeah. Me? I mean, how, oh, how do I, I say no? Are three and then come back? I want to ask boom, you as the first boom, one boom, here. Boom, boom. How do I say no without feeling bad? Well, that's a very good question. And, you know, the thing about it is, is that um, the first few times you do, you're going you're to feel bad. You're going to feel bad. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. But here's what you got to understand is that you are in control of your time. It's your time. It's your day. And for the business owner, you have to understand something. And this is one of the things that we teach you here at Thrive. And it's going to sound crazy. might even sound a little mean. But oh. you come first. Who comes first? The business owner has to come first. You have to be the big pig at the trough. What What does that mean? A lot of a lot of pig analogies here. What What does that mean? Coming in hot. It's come. You know, it's 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 my move. It's my. Weeha! I got my farm logic. Man. See down there on the farm when we're feeding the pigs. I put that slop out there in the trough. I love that slop. Ah, oh, so good. And you know what those pigs do? They all stand back because they know the big pig eats. First. Oh. He picks a spot where he wants to go to the other pigs kind of fill in. And you may say to yourself, that sounds mean. I don't know. No, the customers come first. No, my employees come first. No, everybody else comes first. No, if you own the business, you have to come first. But there's somebody who's been working here a long time and they're ma- not doing their job. But I like them so much as a person. Doesn't and Ninja, ninja, ch- 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 block, block, wow. block. And by doing that, by you owning your day, by you scheduling yourself, by you blocking time off, by you being proactive with your time, if someone comes to you and they want to control what you're doing in a particular time of the day that you don't want to do it don't be a powerless person and say something like well i'll uh <clears throat> you know I'll, I'll let you know or you know i can't because of billy or you know that's oh okay or no be a powerful person look at them and say no <laughs> i had someone come up to me the other day they said hey do you want to watch this cat video i looked at him and said absolutely not don't play that Oh, really? <laughs> I'll did, did, punch in the jejunum. Well, it's a small intestine, by the way. Well, I want to I want to ask this because now, okay, so someone's someone's writing this down I was and doing there's, something right then. I didn't want to, you know, have them eat up. Somebody's okay with saying day. no now, okay? But here's the deal. Here's the deal, okay? Okay. okay. Then the second, there's kind of a two and three, a quick move here is now we have these digital boundaries, okay? So email is a big one, okay? And then texting, email, texting, calling those yeah, kind of. Yeah. I guess two and three would be the email and then the text call. What do you do? How do you time block? I mean, when when do you check your emails? When do you check your text messages? your voicemails how do i do it well the thing about it is is that my i do my email moves throughout the day that's me and i have it on my on my personal my personal phone which is like a computer nowadays i mean i remember back in the day clay i'm old enough to i'm old enough to remember back in the day when you you know a cell phone was like that's a person that's like personal now it's like there's no there's nothing personal about it. If they get a cell phone number, they're going to hammer down on that cell phone. Okay, one a couple couple moves I do here. One, I check emails. And I do a lot of delete, 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 delete. You delete very, that without very, responding? Without responding? Correct. You, number, resp- <laughs> you don't feel bad about that at all? Not at all. Number two, number two, I never answer a call that I don't know who it's from. Ever? Ever. If you want to reach me and I don't know your number, leave a message. If you don't leave a message, you're not going to get a call back. I don't do that <laughs> thing where you know where you've accidentally called someone's the wrong number. Yeah. And you don't say anything because all of a sudden you realize from what their voice message says, you're like, oh, oh, I did. I, that's the wrong number. You hang up. And then, th- then probably 15 minutes later, you get that. Uh, hey there. Uh, God, I missed a call from this number. Uh, mm. I'm like, how desperate are you to talk to somebody? I'm like, uh. that's just. Don't do that. That's not a that's not a move. It's not a move. You don't return <laughs> randomless, you know, okay. calls that came now, out. And then, of course, the text messaging. Now, that's not that you. You know, I almost prefer text messaging because someone can send you a text, and then at your convenience, you can you can text them back, or you can ignore it. And you know what? Ignoring a text or an email is like answering it. What What did I just say? What? Repeat, repeat. I'm just trying to focus. I'm just eating all these baked beans. They're all over my desk. The burnt ends. It's, it's hard to fit it all in my lunch here. I just got a box of chocolates for my sweetheart. I'm practicing. trying to order them on my, Cherry's my Berries lunch. right now. I want to make sure she didn't get a bad one in the box. I'm taking a bite of each one. Well, right that was now. a good one. <laughs> oh, that was, I should have saved that one. That wasn't her. a good one, but I'll just go ahead and finish it. <laughs> She'll love me. I give her some more of those. Here's the thing about it. If you don't answer an email, if you don't answer a text message, you've answered it in a way. Oh, does that make sense? It does. It does. Now, I, now here's a, we have a real business owner here, Coach Calvert of Score Basketball, the number one basketball uh, camp in Oklahoma. It's growing. He's out there doing business. Coach, you're doing business. What questions do you have for Z about time blocking? I mean, you can ask the guy so any. any you're, you're out there doing the adventure of entrepreneurship. What questions do you have? The big thing is, how do you not get caught up in all the little things you have to do every day and get make sure you focus on the big things? 
Very good question. You see, there's a beast in Africa called the lion. Are you familiar with the lion? Mm -hmm. Big mane. I've read about him. Roar. Doesn't like hyenas. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. Okay, you're, 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 you're tracking me with this. I'm, tra- I'm tracking. Okay. Now, if the lion said to himself, I, um, I think I'm going to live on a diet of uh, chipmunk, chipmunks. Makes sense. I'll eat off the chipmunks. I mean, it's a delicious. I'm a lion. I'll just eat chipmunks. I'll just, I can eat what I want. I can, I can eat what I want. I'm top of the food chain. And last time I checked, chipmunks were below me in uh-huh. the food chain. Sign you may be lion. saying to yourself, chipmunks and lions, what, what's he, what's he, where's he going? Hang in there. I'll get there. Now, here's the deal. If the lion spent all his energy every single day chasing chipmunks to eat, to live on, he would die. And you know why that is, Coach? Uh, Not enough food. Bingo. The resources he's expanding to chase that little chipmunk, when he catches one then eats it, it doesn't replace as much calories as it took for him to go out there and get it. And as the business owner... When you said about this, you said, hey, how do I keep from doing all the little, all the little piddly, all the little chipmunks in my life? How do I keep from chasing them? You keep your focus on the zebras. You keep your focus on the, um, what else are they like? The, the big antelopes? Basically, only things that are on the endangered species list that are being protected <laughs> by PETA. That's all they like. <laughs> that's, all, that's the only thing they like. And you may you say to yourself, well, then how do I get that little stuff done? Time block it and knock some of that stuff out. I mean, some of that stuff is, you know, that's why you have employees. Delegate. Get that stuff off your plate. Hey, here, but here. you know, if you have employees, make them go chase the chipmunks. That's what you're paying them for. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into it. We come back. Coach Calvert, we're gonna, Coach Calvert and I, we're going to ambush you with some questions. Because what happens is, in a lot of businesses right now, all across Tulsa, all across America, all across the planet, employers are delegating to people, and the people somehow, they volley it back to their boss. Like you're playing volleyball with the employee. Oh, that move, yeah. You go ahead and serve them the ball, you give them the to-do list item, and they somehow volley it back to you with a question like, I don't know what to do, or could you help me, or I didn't have time, or so we're going to talk about how to go ahead and keep things on somebody else's list that you've delegated to when we come back thrive time show all right thrive nation welcome back to the thrive time show on your radio and today we're answering the questions from real thrivers just like you and specifically we had a thriver in nashville tennessee raven robinson that writes how do i block out time when so many sales related burning fires come up every day and z spoke about that but now we're just talking about how do you get stuff done when you're an actual business owner you run a real business and there's all these distractions and all these things and so what you do is you go you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna hire somebody and i'm gonna begin delegating things to them and so you 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 go ahead and hit the ball to them and you tell them what to do you can get this done and you pass the ball to them and then somehow they hit it back to you going i didn't understand what to do or could you remind me to do this or i ran out of time or so coach i want to ask you you've been self-employed for years my friend you've been you've been coaching basketball for 20 plus years talk to me about what goes on in small business and you maybe make us ask z any questions you might have about this whole time management delegating game here i used to do it all i mean everything bathrooms floors all that kind of stuff i had to start delegating because what i found was i wasn't handling the most important things which was my sales Mm. and i had to get my calls made every day and i found out that if i didn't i was going to wear myself out and so quality of business was first i had to start delegating so let me ask this. Have you ever delegated? See, if I'm listening right now and I've delegated to somebody on my okay. team All right. who is not doing their job. So let's just say I just hired him last week and okay. I said, hey, I need you to make sure that you uh, re- get the printer fixed. That's just an example. I'm, getting, I'm making up one here. Get, get the printer fixed, okay? And then the next week comes you know, comes along and I, I, I sit down to, to, to hit print. I hit print and the printer's not printing and it says the little air, the little red thing and, I'm, and I walk over and I said, hey, did you uh, uh, call the printer person? What's going on? And they go, oh yeah, thanks for reminding me. How would you handle that? Well, <laughs> other than psh, psh, mentally, no, what you do is you say, okay, okay, well, let's do this then. Um, we're going to have to, um, what's the best way to you, for you to remember, Billy? 
Um, now I'm going to do a let's do a post-it note. Uh, you want me to write a magic marker on your left hand, a tie a little string to your pinky, connect it to the printer that you can't leave until you've actually severed that. Ugh. So here, here's what you do, and here's the reality of life, Clay, is that all those things happen all the time when you're a business owner. Now mm-hmm. you try to minimize them, and then you try to say to yourself, okay, how how can I remind them, inspire them, and have them do this? Oh wait a second, that's their job. So you don't operate in an alternative universe. This happens in your universe. It, it happens, and here. Here's, here's the key I tell every every entrepreneur. Oh boy. And that's this is gonna sound mean. Oh don't I don't wanna sound mean. You see, you're gonna put up with those shenanigans. As long as you wanna put up with those shenanigans. I mean, you may like the person a lot. You may say, okay, you know what? That was unrealistic for me to think you're gonna get the printer fixed. It's my bad. So, put too much on. so what do you do on week two if, if the same kind of thing happens? I want to hear what are the words that you would say and you have said. And again, this is a family show. But what are the <laughs> words? What are the words that you would say or have said? Or, I mean, seriously, if somebody says they forgot the second time, what does that look like in your world? How do you say it? Well, at some point, with the second time, maybe, maybe third time, I mean, you, at some point, you've got to say to yourself, okay, people change seldom, and this person, for whatever reason, doesn't understand that I'm paying them to do particular things to make my life easier. And by them not doing it, now they're not only, ma- now they're making my life more difficult, because I would have already done it, you know? Yeah, I would have taken time, that's why I hired you to take these things off my plate. As the analogy we gave earlier, to chase the chipmunks, the, the busy stuff, as Coach was saying earlier, okay? And at some point, you've got to say to yourself this isn't a good fit for you because you're making my life more miserable you're costing me my time my joy my energy and costing me money and embarrassment in front of my clients so you know what things just aren't working out which rabbit trails into my next question if say that i'm ready to say that where do you find all your good people my man that could be a separate show but where do you find all your good people where do you do it i mean you go to the people greatpeople.com or do you just go to a church and hire exclusively from there are you hiring all the chick-fil-a employees away from them what are you doing how do you find good people they're everywhere out there you just got to what you're going to do is you got to open your eyes to them you may say what what is that yeah when i'm at a restaurant and there's a, a waiter or a waitress that is just on top of their game and you know what i'm talking about we've all been we've all had a bad waiter or waitress experience okay and you may say to yourself you know what i think i can coach them up i'm gonna hire <laughs> i'm gonna hire them <laughs> yeah because i I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mentor them up. Yeah, I'm a life I want to be, I want to be a life coach. I'm a life coach. Bro. No, you, you have some, you have somebody that is just on top of their game. They remember things. They're, they're point on. I mean, your, your glass never gets empty, and you're like, wow, that was great service. That is, and they have some high character to them, and you can tell that just by meeting them and reading people, and, and there's that gut feeling you, you get about somebody. You could be wrong, and if you're wrong, you, you fire fast, okay? But you find good people out there working, and that you. St- you st- you steal them because <laughs> I'm telling you when you're at the restaurant next time you're out there and you get excellent service and it's someone's or I, the best move is you go to the mall because see malls are open late hours oh wow malls are also open through the week the weekend so my optometry clinic that was always a challenge because I was open seven days a week still am and so you a lot of people out there I don't want to work seven days a week so one of my moves I used to do back in the day was go to the mall and I'd work the stores. You know, you do the old kind of shop. You know, Is that the, why you're the banned from shopping. the buckle? You can't go in the buckle well, anymore? You know, I mean, it was a thing. It was with that one thing. I mean, you know, I mean, pff, you know. Sir, I mean, uh, are you going to buy anything? <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, I'm looking for shop- employees. I'm, I mean, jeans. I'm faux shopping. Yeah, I'm just not, I'm not going to buy some jeans. I'm going to hire Billy here away from you. So you go. So what I would, I would do is I would find uh, an organization that had worse hours than I did. And I'd think, okay, if they're willing to, to work there, then that's, that at least eliminates that off the plate. So then you just kind of do that you know that window shopping that kind of faux shopping where you're kind of picking things up and you're looking around you see if people are greeting you how uh, how enthusiastic they are you know and uh, and then that way what you can do is you then you just kind of slip them a little one of your business card and said hey if you want a real job give me a call you got you got the right stuff <laughs> the grass is greener at Z- dr zellner's <laughs> yeah the grass is always all right now thrivers now here, here's a notable quotable i want to put into your head okay this is a, a notable quotable that blows my mind every time i read it this is from jim Rohn, the best-selling author motivational speaker he said this you don't get paid for the hour you get paid for the value that you bring to the hour that is huge that's huge it's very good and and that is a plus employees mentality and you may say, so A plus B, why are you grading people? Does that mean you're just, you're judging, you're mean. How is that? And I go, no, 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 it's just the reality of life. 
You know when you've got a great employee, take good care of them because somebody else will if you don't. And you know when you have an average employee, and you know when you have a horrible employee. Horrible ones are actually easier than average. Yeah, don't take care of your bad employees. That way someone else will take care of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah things just aren't working out, buddy. You need to move on down the road. Now, Thrivers, we have another question that came in from a Thriver just like you in Dallas, Texas. Okay, he writes oh, this. D. He says, what is your process for evaluating pricing and structure? So uh, I want to ask this, Coach Calvert. If I'm listening right now and I want to get involved in your basketball camp, if I want to send my kid to your basketball camp, what's your website and how much does it charge to send my kid to basketball camp? Well, the how I talk to people, how we did our pricing. I mean, how do you do it? What, what does it cost at this point? What does it cost right now if I want to sign up my kid right now? My kid needs to improve their left hand. Uh, it's $99 a package for young kids and $169 for older. $99. Mm-hmm. Now, Z, if I'm looking for a, a one uh, eye exam and a one pair of stylish glasses, how much is it at Dr. Robert Zellner's? Uh, it starts at $99. And that includes a free frame warranty and the guarantee that we put behind it that you will be extremely happy with. It. So the question that I have and a lot of the thrivers have is how did you two arrive at that price? I mean, how did you get to where that, that was your price that you're charging? Oh, and if I'm listening right now and I want to set the prices for my, let's say, organic Ooh. drive-through smoothies, how Ooh. am I going to determine the prices? How can I possibly Ooh. do it? Oh, I know, I know, no. Can I tell you? Can I tell Please you? tell me now. I, I don't think I have enough time. We, we have very little time before the break. Well, tell me come now. come back from the break, will you let me will you, will you let me answer? Give it to me now. Will you let me answer right after the break? We have only three seconds before the break. I want the answer. I find all Stay tuned. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on your radio. This is your number one business coaching program. If you've ever wanted to start or grow a business, that's what we do. We're kind of like, you know, you've heard about Yoda. We're more of like your Barodas. We're here to help you learn the specific. There's a lot of theory out there. There's a lot of great TED Talks. There's a lot of theory. There's a lot of great books you could read. But how do you actually do it? And I would encourage you to uh, talk to real business owners that have really had some success in the world of business. And that's what Dr. Z and I do. It's business school without the BS. And we always answer questions from thrivers like you. But just recently in the last few months, hundreds and hundreds of you continue to email info at thrive15.com. And typically we just kind of weave your questions into the show, but it's gotten to a point where there are so many questions coming in. We wanted to devote an entire show just to answering your specific questions. And so we have a thriver in Dallas who writes, what is your process for evaluating pricing structure? So I asked you guys before the break, what do you charge? Uh, And Z has said it's $99, starting at $99 for an eye exam and a pair of stylish glasses. And Coach Calvert, you said $99 to attend your basketball camp. And so I want to know, okay, I'm I'm on scorebball.com. I see your prices are $99, but then I go back to my website. I own a muffler shop. How do I determine my prices? And how did you determine your prices? So Coach, I want to start with you. How did you determine your prices? What's the best way for me if I'm struggling to figure out what I should be charging? Well, first thing you have to look at is what you what your costs are. What can you do it for? Don't undercut yourself. I did that for years. So determine your costs. Yep. And Z, this is one thing. And you, you obviously have invested in a bank and you've been a part of working on a bank board where you see people coming in for small business loans. I always advise entrepreneurs to try to operate your business at about a 30% profit. I mean, you can operate it more or a little bit less, but I encourage you to not be operating your business at a deficit or a 2% profit rate. Um, Z, if you know all your costs and you did add them all up, what's the profit margin that you would encourage every thriver to operate their business at? Oh, I think that 25 at the minimum, probably 35. If you get much over 35, you are now becoming what we call affectionately a hog and not a pig. So um, step one of my number one, my top 10 rules of business is be the the pig and not the hog. Pigs get fat, hogs get butchered. What does that mean? You can't be too greedy. It's the day that you're too greedy and you try to make too much money on your on your service or your or your product is the day you get undercut by competition and that's what you see in, in life all the time things like that going on and well, that business is doing so good and yet now they're not and and because they're they're being greedy they're charging too much so coach had absolutely step one in the process and the process is know what your costs are know what your how much profit you can make know what your hard cost is what hard cost is is that your actual out of pocket your cost okay. So you have, uh, you know, you may say to yourself, well, you know, they, they, it, this cost me this. Yeah, but are you, are you, 
counting in the employee that has to open that and put it on the shelf and how much time does that take? Are you counting, you know, you, it, it got shipped to you and you had to pay the shipping on that. You know, you had to, there's a, you know, you have a lot of different little costs in there that if you're not careful, that can eat into your profit margins, okay? Now here's the, here's the next, there's, you have step two and three of determining your pricing. Okay. Step two, what, you want to make sure that, you know, one, you know your costs, that's right. Yep. Two, though, you want to make sure that you solve the problem. See, a lot of business owners, you have a product that's not really solving the problem. So you want to go ahead and add in all the costs of, not only the costs of being in business, but make sure that you are solving their problem. I'll give you an example. I've seen many restaurants that they do this move. This is this is such a tacky, terrible move. And if you're doing this, don't do this move. It's where you're like, well, I don't want to raise prices, but if anyone wants ranch dressing, I'll charge them 75 cents. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't want to. I don't want to raise prices, but I do want to charge per ketchup packet. I've li- I've literally seen a place in New York City that did that kind of thing, and I'm like, "Do you want a ketchup packet?" Yeah, and it's like ninety cents more because I got nine ketchup packets for my family. It's like, are you kidding me? So you want to figure out what does it cost, Coach, to solve the problem? Well, my wife and I quit going to a restaurant because they upcharged everything. We were like, "That's ridiculous." We felt like we were being cheated. And I'll tell you why they're upcharging. It's probably because they didn't charge enough to solve the problem. They probably had to find a way to do it, and they felt bad. And they're like, "Well, I'm just going to keep," or they're just nickel and diamond, or they're being a, you know a hog and not a pig. Either yeah. way, it doesn't work well. So one, determine your hard costs. Two, make sure you are solving the problem and know what it actually costs to it. And then this third move, and this is what Z our two day in person workshops are all about. Determine what it costs to wow. Wow. To wow. So here's the deal. When you come out to a two-day in-person workshop, I'm going to walk you through the visual splendor that you can see on Facebook Live. Okay. One is we have a, a desk that you'll be seated at. You won't be crammed in there with a bunch of randos that you don't know. You're not sitting next to a guy next to you going, wow, I'm packed in here like at a big hotel conference. Yeah, yeah. You have your own desk. Yeah. That costs some money. No, an airplane seat with the big guy next to you. That's, That's right. You're one. not on the airplane seat, That's too. That's the dreaded one. Is you have a copy of the Boom Book. Now, what's the boom book this is our 13 plays this is like a playbook for business okay you get the the boom book if you attend the workshop three you get access to the world's best business school with over 250 downloadable pdfs and over 3,000 video tutorial videos you can watch so it's like literally it's like the the harvard business school of small business is available for you and that's all included oh and z we have a coffee bar oh and the the beautiful smell of pinion wood which is kind of priceless but the idea is you get so much more than what you paid for and you and i had to sit down and think about all of those details and we have to have a night or a twenty thousand square foot facility where we host it at when you walk in it's like the disneyland of entrepreneurship it, it is it's like those uh dot com places out in california that you know except we don't have a slide i don't I'm th- we could probably put a slide in I, we, we probably we probably could we probably need more like a video games and that kind of thing to be fo- totally so so cal <laughs> yeah absolutely but the great thing about it is you're going to thrive time show since you were talking about our in-person conference uh, where you come and, and you learn the 13 super moves that we're going to teach you in those two days i tell you we'll go to thrivetimeshow.com and you can get on there and since it's valentine's day you can give it to a loved one you might say to yourself i can't afford it you know what we have scholarship programs that nobody's going to be turned down because they can't afford it you might be turned down because we sold out of tickets because we're not going to cram a a bunch of people in here make it awkward so i think we have 35 slots left for this february in 10 days that's right 10 days get on there there's gonna be no upselling and we guarantee that with our scholarships you can't afford it now while you were while you were uh, uh, talking there one thing i was doing is i'm going i'm on the site right now and i'm looking here at forbes forbes actually said this about us Okay. Forbes magazine said this. They said, with tools like Thrive15.com, people of any age can learn to start or take their business to the next level. That's from Forbes. I don't know. So I'd have to see some. It's kind some of a big deal. It's kind of a big deal. I would have to see some reviews. So if I'm on Google and I type in Thrive15 uh-huh. reviews, uh, there you're going to find hundreds of reviews from people just like you. And oh, by the way, we've been asked to speak at companies like Chevron and Hewlett Packard and O'Reilly Auto Parts. But we say, hey, we've done it. We've been there. We've done that. We are very appreciative. But now you got to come to the dojo of Mojo if you want to learn to start and grow a business. Clay, it's all, it all, it all ask, happens here. Yes, sir. Can I ask you a question? If I was listening to you and Dr. Z, I'd be a little overwhelmed thinking these guys got five businesses they do they handle what sounds to me like millions of dollars how can the average guy really make it well i would say this is the first thing you have to do is you have to find a problem that the world has in your case um, a lot of kids want more playing time they want to play basketball at the next level and i think you realized hey you know what i could help 
kids do that. You've helped, I think, four four guys play in the NBA now. Is that right? Four, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, dozens and dozens play at the Division One level. Actually, over fifty play at the Division One level. Um, but you first saw a problem, and you said, "I think I can solve that." And I think that's where it starts. Z is if you have you got to look around, be be aware of problems that the world has, and and ask yourself, "What problems can I solve with my skills, my resources, my tools?" Yeah, and and to dovetail also on the question of how to price. You know, we've talked about making sure that your product wows. You know, ultimately it makes it make like it's a uh, wowful. Is it, can I say wowful? Wowful. That sounds wow. technical. <laughs> it's wowful. It's a new word. Um, but then also, I, one of the super moves that I always do and I, I, I teach people to do is that is shop your competitors. What does that mean? In other words, you find out who's doing what you're doing in your community and you go and you price shop them. In other words, you find out what they're charging for the same thing you want to sell because odds are what you're bringing to the market, somebody else out there is doing. It's kind of like you started Elephant in the Room, a men's grooming lounge. Guys were getting their haircut in Tulsa. They were getting their haircut in Tulsa. I thought, I didn't know other guys were getting their haircut before we started. They, I thought we brought haircuts to Tulsa. <laughs> no, no. The gentleman was walking around just shaggy headed. Oh, I sure wish we had a haircut place. The city needs a haircut there. place. Yeah. Kind of like when I opened up optometry. There was plenty of optometrists in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm. All right. And so what you do is you have to, you price shop them maniacally. And now you know, okay, here's, here's what they're charging. Here's what my cost is. Now, here's where my profit margin wants to be. Can I beat them? And if so, then then I can be a value. I, this could be a value driven a value driven product. Now, you know what, Z? We have shopped the competition. I'm going to read them off here to you. You see, you can kind of see how we stack up here. Okay, the if you go to Tony Robbins, you're going to spend about a thousand dollars to two thousand dollars for a ticket between a thousand and three thousand. You go to Rich Dad Poor Dad, you'll probably spend five hundred dollars or more. Then you get upsold a lot. You go to the Maui Mastermind, it's thirty thousand dollars. Well, how much are your how much are your seminars? How much are the Thrive Time workshops? Let me tell you this. We have a scholarship program set up, so it doesn't matter how much money you have. If you can't afford it, you don't owe us anything. There's no student debt. Just get here. Go to th- Take the first step. Go to thrivetimeshow.com. Go on there. Learn about it. And I'm telling you what, you will not be disappointed. It will absolutely change your life. And Z, if someone wants one-on-one business coaching, we have that available at thrivetimeshow.com. If they want to hear today's podcast, radio show archive, go to thrivetimeshow.com. If you want to sign up for the world's best business school, go to thrive15.com. And also, if you want to improve your kids' basketball skills, for the love of all that is holy, go to score B- ball.com that's scorebball.com coach thanks for being on the show today and as always thrivers hey happy valentine's day three two one boom all right jt so hypothetically in your mind what is the purpose of having a business um to get you to your goals so it's a vehicle to get you to your destination Whoa. and would uh you need profits to get there i mean is the is it, when you have a business that's successful and you're in your mind in your expert opinion would you need profits to get your to your to get you to your to your goals yeah because if you have a 15 million dollar business but you have 15 million dollars of expenses it's kind of pointless holy crap all right so the question i would have here for you if you could take like i don't know 10 minutes or less and see if you could save 3000 bucks a year by reducing your credit card fees. Would you do it? Yes, absolutely. Holy crap. Why would somebody out there who's listening right now who has a sane mind, why would they not uh, go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card, thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card to schedule a 10 minute consultation to see if they can reduce their credit card fees by at least 3000 bucks a year. Why would they not do it? Yeah, why would they not do it? Um, maybe because they didn't understand how you said the website. <laughs> this tree is a symbol of the spirit of the Griswold family Christmas. No, that's that's clear. Okay, so that that could be a, that could be true. So I encourage everybody to check out thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. Thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. What would be another reason why someone would not be willing to take ten minutes to compare rates to see if they could save three thousand dollars or more on credit card fees? Maybe they think it is a waste of time and that it won't. It's not possible. So there's somebody out there that's making more than three thousand dollars every ten minutes, and they're like, nah, that's not worth my time. <laughs> We getting there, right, money. We getting there, right, money. There's probably some someone out there okay. that would think that. Well, I'll just tell you, folks, if you're out there today and uh, you're making less than uh, $3,000 per 10 minutes, I would highly recommend that you go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash hard uh, it, it, because you can compare rates, you can save money. And you know the, the big the big goal, in, in my opinion, of building a, a business is to create time freedom and financial freedom. 
And in order to do that, you have to maximize your profits. Holy crap. Now, one way to maximize your profits is to increase your revenue. Another way to do it is to decrease your expenses. It's a profit deal. <laughs> it takes the pressure off. JT, is there any other reason why somebody would not be willing to take 10 minutes to compare rates to see if they could save a total of three thousand dollars a year on average i am at a loss and i cannot think of any other shampoo is better i go on first and clean the hair conditioner is better i leave the hair silky and smooth oh really fool really <laughs> stop looking at me swan well, let me tell you a good story here real quick here. I actually, uh, years ago, compared rates uh, with this company here called IPS. It's Integrated Payment Services. And I, I scheduled a consultation. I I don't know that I was skeptical. I just thought, whatever, I'll take 10 minutes. I'll compare rates. I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. No, I mean, I'm just not sure. Or can't you take a guess? Well, not for another two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? And in my case, in my in my case, in my particular case, I save over twenty thousand dollars a year. Holy crap! Wow. Which is, uh, you know, like uh, groceries when my wife goes to the organic stores. Find everything you need today. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Oh god. No. Everything okay, ma'am? Oh, uh, it's just that you've only scanned a few items and it's already 60 bucks. Uh, I'm so scared. Okay, I'm a trained professional, ma'am. I've scanned a lot of groceries. I need you to stay with me. It's just that my in-laws are in town and they want a charcuterie board. Well, this isn't gonna be easy, so I need you to be brave, all right? What's your name? Patricia. Patricia, all right. I need you to take a deep breath. We're about to do the cheese. You know, that's the yeah. difference between eating groceries. organic and not organic. So because my wife eats organic, I had to take the 10 minutes needed to compare rates to save the $20,000 a year on credit card fees just for one of my companies. One question, what's the brand name of the clock? The brand name of the clock, Rod, brand do we have it? Brand name of the clock, it's an elegant from Ridgeway. It's from Ridgeway. Let's, let's buy. Buy the clock. And sell the fireplace. So I encourage everybody out there, go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. You schedule a free consultation, request information. A member of our team will call you. They'll schedule a free consultation. It should take you 10 minutes or less. Uh, and they're going to compare rates and see if they can't save you more than $3,000 a year off of your credit card processing. You were hoping what? I wouldn't owe you money at the no, end of the day. No, you don't owe us money. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, the goal of a business is to create time freedom and financial freedom. And in order to do, and in order to do that, you need to create additional profits. It's good. It's good. The number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. We are Jared and Jennifer Johnson. We own Platinum Pest and Lawn and are located in Owasso, Oklahoma. And we have been working with Thrive for business coaching for almost a year now. Yeah, so, so what we wanna do is we wanna share some wins with you guys uh, that, that we've had by working with Thrive. Um, first of all, um, we're on the top page of Google now, okay? Um, I just wanna let you know what type of accomplishment this is. Our competition, Orkin, Terminex, they're both $1.3 billion companies. They both have two to 3,000 pages of content um, attached to their website. So to basically go from uh, virtually non-existent on Google to up on the top page is, is really saying something. Um, but that's come by being uh, diligent to the systems that, that Thrive has, um, by, be, by uh, being consistent and diligent on, on doing podcasts um, and staying on top of those podcasts um, to really help uh, with, with getting up on uh, uh, with their listing and ranking there with Google. And also, we've been um, trying to get Google reviews, you know, asking our customers for reviews. And now we're the highest rated and most reviewed pest and lawn company in the Tulsa area. And that's really helped with our conversion rate. And the number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. Wait, say, say that again. How much are we up? 411%. Okay. So 411% um, we're up with, with our new customers. Amazing. Right. right. So not only do we have more customers calling in, we're able to close those deals at a much higher rate than we were before. 
Right now our closing rate is about 85% and that's largely uh, due to, uh, first of all, like our Google reviews that we've gotten people really see that our customers are happy, but also we have a script that we follow. And so when customers call in, they get all the information that they need. Uh, that script has been refined time and time again. Uh, it wasn't a one and done deal. We, it was a system that we, that we followed with Thrive in, in the refining process. And that has obviously, um, the 411% shows that that, that that system works. Yeah, so here's a big one for you. So last week alone, our booking percentage was 91%. We actually booked more deals, more new customers last year than we did the first five months, or I'm sorry, the first, we, we booked more deals last week than we did the first five months of last year from before we, we, we worked with Thrive. So again, we booked more deals last week than the first five months of last year. It, and it's incredible, but, but the reason why we have that success is by implementing uh, the systems that, that Thrive has taught us and, and, and helped us out with. Some of those systems that we've implemented are group interviews. That way we've really been able to uh, come up with a really great team. Um, we've created and implemented checklists. That way everything um, gets done and it gets done right. Uh, we, it creates accountability. Uh, we're able to make sure that everything uh, gets done properly, both out in the field and also in our office. Um, and also doing the podcast like Jared had mentioned that has really, really contributed to our success. But that like I said, the diligence and um, consistency and doing those in that system has really, um, really been a, a big blessing in our lives. And also, um, you know, it's really shown that we've gotten the success from following those systems. Yeah. So before working with Thrive, uh, we were basically stuck. Um, really no new growth um, w with our with our business. Um, and we, we were in a rut and we so, didn't know. Oh, sorry. No. The last three years, our customer base had pretty much stayed the same. We weren't shrinking, but we weren't really growing either. Yeah, and so we didn't we didn't really know where to go, what to do, uh, how to get out of this rut that we're in. Uh, but Thrive helped us with that. You know, they, they implemented those systems, that they taught us those systems, they taught us the knowledge that we needed um, in order to succeed. Now it's been a grind, absolutely it's been a grind this last year, um, but, we're, but we're getting those fruits uh, from, from that hard work and, and the diligent effort that, that we're able to put into it. Um, so again, we were in a rut, Thrive helped us get out of that rut. Um, and, uh, and if you're thinking about I'm working with, with, with Thrive. Quit thinking about it and just do it. Um, do the action um, and you'll get the results. It, it will take hard work and discipline, um, but, but, uh, but that's what it's gonna take in order to, in order to, to really succeed. So uh, we just wanna give a big shout out to Thrive, a big thank you out there to, to Thrive. We wouldn't be where, we at, where we're at now um, without their help. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Moore. I'm a pediatric dentist. Through our new digital marketing plan, we have seen a market increase in the number of new patients that we're seeing every month, year over year. One month, for example, we went from 110 new patients the previous year to over 180 new patients um, in the same month. And overall, our average is running about 40 to 42 percent increase month over month, year over year. The group of people required to implement our new digital marketing plan is immense, starting with a business coach videographers, photographers, web designers. Back when I graduated dental school in 1985, nobody advertised. The only marketing that was ethically allowed in everybody's eyes was mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing. By choosing to use the services, you're choosing to use a proof and turnkey marketing and coaching system that will grow your practice and get you the results that you're looking for. I went to the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry graduated in 1983, and then I did my pediatric dental residency at Baylor College of Dentistry from 1983 to 1985. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise, and Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy's just amazing. He's, he's, this kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours on the day to day. He does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies. He's at the top. He has a team of uh, business coaches, videographers, 
and graphic designers and web developers, and they run 160 companies every single week. So think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies. So in the weekly, he's running 160 companies. Um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up, and he teaches people a 13-step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building it into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like, Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and, and that's what I like him most about him. He's like, he's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down. Um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine and we just wanna give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you, and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. See, it's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing, and this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing. And this is our new team. We went from four to 14 and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman. So we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grossed 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the highest and most reviewed business workshops on the planet. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered.
The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get-rich-quick, walk-on-hot-coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 Auto Auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. Go back eight years ago. Think about the, the number of clients you had back then versus the number of clients you have now. As a percentage, what has been the growth over the past eight years, do you think? we got to well, inspire somebody out there who just well, doesn't have the time to listen okay, to their calls. Okay, so, Clay, it's, it's, it's like I would go up and down from uh, about $10,000 a month up to about 40000 but it was up and down roller coaster. And so now – We've, we've got it to where we're in excess of 100 clients. That's awesome. And so I would have anywhere from five clients to 20 clients on my own with networking, but I had no control over it. I, I, I didn't, without the systems, you're going to be at the, you're going to be victimized by your own business. For the, somebody out there who struggles with math, if you, let's say that your average cl number of clients was 30 and you go to 100, as a percentage, what is that? I, I have grown, I have doubled every year since working with you so i've doubled in clients i've doubled in revenue every year it's a hundred percent growth every year i've worked with. now so so i'm looking we've been good friends seven eight years and i've got doubled five times which is just incredible i mean the first time you do it that's one thing but when you do it repeatedly yeah i mean that's we're unbelievable work, we're working our blessed assurance off this year to double we're planning on doubling again we're incorporating new some 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 new things in there to really help us do it but we are going to double again this year i started coaching but it would go up and down clay that's when i came to you as i was going up and down and i wanted to go up and up instead of up and down and so that's when it needed a system so creating a system is you have nailed down specific steps that you're going to take no matter how you feel, no matter the results, you lean into them and you do them regardless of what's happening. You lean into them and it will give you X number of leads. You follow up with those leads, turns into sales. Well, I tell you, you know, it, it's if you don't have a script and you don't have a system, then every day is a whole new creation. You're creating a, a lot of energy just to figure out what are you going to do. Right. And the best executives, Peter Drucker is a father of modern management. He said, the most effective executives make one decision a year. What you do is you make a decision, what is your system, and then you work like the Dickens to make sure you follow that system. And so that, that, that's really what it's all about. So with a script here, I, you know, I, we have a brand new gal that just came, came in working for us. She nailed down the script, and yep. she's been nailing down appointments. Usually, we try to get one appointment for every 100 calls. We make two to 300 calls a day per rep. Right. And she's been nailing down five and eight appointments a day. Somebody out there is having a hard time. script. What's, so she's making how many calls a day? She's making between two and 300 calls a day. Whoa. And our relationship is weird in that we, we do, um, if someone were to buy an Apple computer today, yeah. And uh, or, or let's say about a personal computer, a PC. The computer is made by, let's say, Dell. But then the software in the computer um, would be Microsoft, let's say, or Adobe or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I make I basically make the systems 
and uh, you're, you're like the computer and I'm like the software. It's kind of how I would describe our relationship. Yeah. Tim, uh, I want to ask you this. You and I reconnected, um, and, uh, I think it was in the year 2000 and, uh, what was it, maybe 2010? Is that right? 2011 maybe? or no, maybe, maybe further down the road. Maybe 2013? 2012. Okay, so 2012, and uh, at that time I had I was five years removed from the, D, from the DJ business, and you were how many years removed from tax and accounting software? Uh, it was about... 10, 11 years. We met, um, how did we re-meet? What was the first interaction? There was some interaction where you and I first connected. I just remember that somehow you and I went to Hideaway Pizza. But do you remember when we first reconnected? Yeah. Uh, well, we had that speaking thing that- uh, Oh, there uh, it was. So yeah. it was Victory Christian Center. I was yeah. speaking there. My name is Robert Redmond. I uh, actually first met Clay almost three years ago to the day. I don't know if he remembers it or not. But I wasn't working with him at the time. I asked to see him and just ask him some questions to help, you know, direct my life, to get some mentorship. Uh, but I've been working with Clay for now just over a year. Uh, the role I play here is a business coach, uh, business consultant. I work with different businesses, implementing uh, best practice processes and systems that I have uh, learned here uh, by working with Clay. And the experience working here has to put it real plainly, has been just life-changing. Um, I have not only learned new things and uh, have gained new knowledge, uh, but, but I have gained a whole new mindset um, that I believe wherever I end up uh, will serve me well throughout the rest of my life. Since working with Clay, uh, I have learned so much. I mean, I would like to say almost everything about, about business in terms of the different categories. I haven't learned it all. Uh, but I've learned all about marketing. I've learned about advertising. I've learned about branding. I've learned how to create a sales process for organizations in any industry. I've learned how to sell. Uh, I've learned how to create repeatable systems and processes and uh, hold people accountable. Um, you know, how to hire people. It's, it's, it's almost like every aspect of a business you can learn. I have learned um, a lot in, in those different categories. Uh, and then, Again, the, the mindset that I've gained here um, has been huge. You know, uh, working here, uh, you, can't, you, you can't be a mediocre person. Um, you are uh, a call to a higher standard of, of excellence. And then as you're called to that standard here, you begin to see those outcomes in every area of your life, uh, that standard of excellence that, that you want to implement um, no matter what you're involved in. Uh, I would like to describe the other... Uh, people that, that work with Clay uh, are people that are going somewhere with their life. Uh, Marshall in, in the group interview uh, talks about how, uh, you know, the, the best fits for this organization are, are the people that, that are goal-oriented. So they're on their own trajectory, and we're on our own trajectory, and uh, the, the best fits are those people where there can be a, a mutually beneficial relationship, that as we pursue our goals, uh, and we help the business pursue those goals, the uh, business helps us pursue our goals as well. Uh, and so I'd say people that are driven, people that want to make something of their lives, uh, people that are uh, goal-oriented, they're focused, uh, uh, and uh, they're committed to overcoming any adversity that may uh, come their way. Clay's passion for helping business uh, owners grow their businesses is it's, it's unique in that I don't know if there's anyone else's that can be as passionate. Um, you know, whenever a business starts uh, uh, working with Clay, uh, it, it's almost as like Clay is, is running that business in the sense that he has something at stake. Um, you know, he's just serving them. Uh, they're, they're, they're one of his clients, but it's, it's as if he is actively involved in the business. Whenever they have a win, he's posting it all over his social media. He's shouting it across uh, the, the room here, here at Thrive. Um, you know, he's uh, sending people encouraging messages. He can kind of be that, that life coach and, and, and business coach in terms of being that uh, a motivator and that champion for uh, people's businesses. It's, 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 again, unique because there's no one else I've seen uh, get so excited about and passionate about other people's businesses. The kind of people that wouldn't like working with Clay are people that are satisfied with, with mediocrity, uh, people that uh, want to get th through life by just doing enough, 
by just getting by. Uh, people who are not looking to develop themselves, people who are not coachable, people who think that they know it all and they're unwilling to change. Um, I would say those are the type of people. In, in short, anyone that's content with mediocrity uh, would not like working with Clay. So if, if um, you're meeting Clay for the first time, the advice I'd give you is uh, definitely come ready to take tons of notes. Uh, every time Clay speaks, he uh, um, gives you a wealth of knowledge uh, that you don't want to miss. I remember the first time that I met Clay, I literally carried a notebook with me all around. I was looking at this notebook the other day, actually. I carried a notebook with me uh, all around, and I just took tons of notes. I filled the entire notebook in uh, about, about three or four months, uh, just from being around Clay, following him, and, and, and learning from him. And then I would say, come, come coachable. Uh, uh, be, be open to uh, learning something new. Be open to challenging yourself. Uh, be open to um, learning and, and adjusting parts about you that, that uh, need to be adjusted.